Three minutes ago, Super Typhoon Feng Wang smashed into a Philippines already battered by disaster. Winds topped 185 kilometers per hour. Thousands of families have been evacuated. Power systems are failing, flights are collapsing, and rivers threaten to burst their banks. Tsunami alarms are ringing, and fresh trauma is everywhere. Is this country facing more than just the world's next superstorm? The real danger and the truth about what comes next may surprise you. At 1600 local time, Super Typhoon Feng Wang's center is located at 15.8 degrees north, 122.8 degrees east, just off Aurora Province's battered coast. Source Pagasa, November 9, 2025, 0800 UTC. Sustained winds are 185 kilometers per hour, with gusts reaching 230 kilometers per hour. The storm's gale field stretches 1,800 kilometers wide, sweeping across Luzon and the Visayas. Source, Pagasa, November 9th, 2025, 0800 UTC. The government's highest storm warning, signal number five, covers much of northern and eastern Luzon. More than one million people have left their homes in the last 24 hours, following evacuation orders from local officials and the National Disaster Council. Source, N, D, R, R, M, C. November 9th, 2025, 0800 UTC. Shelters are filling fast in Aurora, Katanduan, and Bicol. Some families carry only a single bag. Others bring children wrapped in raincoats, all moving before nightfall to avoid being trapped by rising water or blocked roads. Airlines have grounded more than 300 flights across Manila, Clark, Legazpi, and Cebu. All sea travel in the eastern and central regions is suspended, with wave warnings posted for heights up to 14 meters. Source, No Tam, NDRRMC Pagasa. November 9th, 2025, 0800 UTC. Power outages are already spreading as the first bands of the typhoon snap lines and topple trees in coastal towns. In the impact zone, Aurora, Northeast Luzon, and the Bicol Coast, floodwaters are climbing fast, pushing into streets and fields. On the ground, barangay leaders in towns like San Rafael are using loudspeakers and text alerts to call on anyone left behind to get to higher ground. Local officials warn that flood-prone areas and those with damaged roofs from the last typhoon are at greatest risk. The president's emergency order is in effect, unlocking extra resources for rescue and relief. Source, Pagasa and N-D-R-R-C, November 9th, 2025, 0800 UTC. The message from every level is clear. If you are in a low-lying or coastal area, move now. If you have not already, the typhoon's power is not slowing down. Stay tuned to official bulletins. Conditions can change by the hour. Source, Pagayasa, JTWC, JMA, and NDR, RMC. November 9th, 2025, 0800 UTC. River gauges across Luzon are now reporting levels not seen since last year's worst floods. At Buntun Station on the Cagayan River, the latest reading shows 10.2 meters, already past the critical threshold, with more rain coming in from Feng Wang's outer bands. Source, Pagasa Flood. Bulletin, number 37, November 9, 2025, 4 p.m. Philippine time. Downstream, Magat Dam is releasing over 2,200 cubic meters per second trying to prevent an uncontrolled spill, but the water below is already at 7.8 meters, above its own critical mark. Source, National Water Resources Board and Pagayasa, November 9, 2025, 3 p.m. Philippine time. In the Bicol region, the Naga City flood wall gauge has passed 2.4 meters, forcing new evacuation orders as urban flooding starts. Source, Local Government Unit Naga and Pagasa, November 9, 2025, 2.50 p.m. Philippine time. The ground itself is soaked from Typhoon Kalmi just days ago. Soils on mountain slopes and river basins are saturated, leaving almost nowhere for new rain to go. Any additional downpour can send water rushing over fields, highways, and straight into low-lying towns. Hydrologists warn that with every hour of heavy rain, the risk of sudden landslides and flash floods rises sharply. 
infrastructure damage from the last storm remains a weak point. In Aurora, a 180-meter breach in Baylor's coastal seawall is only patched by sandbags, with full repairs delayed due to missing materials. Source, Department of Public Works and Highways, Situationer number 127, November 9, 2025, 1.40 p.m. Philippine time. The Magat Bridge in Isabella, a key supply route, has undermined piers and is restricted to light vehicles. Any further rise could force a total closure. Source, DPWH. Bridge ID, BRISA MAG, 022, inspected November 7, 2025. In Cagayan, the Tuao River Bridge approach road is still collapsed, leaving only a temporary bypass vulnerable if waters keep rising. Shelters in several provinces are running below capacity, not because of a lack of need, but because many roofs were damaged by Calme and have not been fixed. Some evacuation centers are now as exposed as the homes people left behind. A Pagasa forecaster summed it up. A super typhoon after a major storm means our risk maps go from urgent to critical. The land simply cannot take more water. Source, Pagasa, November 9, 2025, 4 p.m. Philippine time. With rivers already high and defenses weakened, even a moderate surge or another burst of rain could trigger fast widespread disaster. Storm surge is now the most immediate threat along the eastern bays and river mouths. Pagasa's latest surge advisory warns that water heights could reach 2 to 4 meters in Baylor Bay, Lamon Bay, San Miguel Bay, and the Cagayan Delta, enough to submerge single-story homes and sweep away vehicles. Source, Pagasa. Surge advisory number 14, November 9, 2025, 4 p.m. Philippine time. In Baylor, the tide is set to peak just after midnight, increasing the risk that surge and high tide will overlap. Local officials are urging anyone near the shore or riverbanks to move to higher ground before dark. The NDRRMC Coastal Desk reports that evacuation centers in Aurora and Camarinas Norte are already close to capacity. Some shelters are sandbagged, but many are within the projected flood zone. In Belair, the central evacuation center sits just meters above sea level with staff monitoring live surge readings and preparing for possible relocation if waters rise too quickly. Source, NDRRMC. Situation Report, November 9th, 2000. 1025, 5 p.m. Philippine time. In Lamon Bay, surge polygons show up to 8,000 people living inside the four meter risk zone, including entire barangays like Batangan and Kauaian. Source, Pagasa and the International Federation of Red Cross Population Risk Map, November 9th, 2025. Local power substations and hospitals fall within these flood polygons, raising concern that both electricity and emergency care could be cut off if the surge overtops defenses. The Department of Public Works and Highways confirms that some seawalls in Malbon and Infanta were only patched with sandbags after damage from Typhoon Calme and may not withstand a new onslaught. The International Federation of Red Cross Warehouse Log shows less than three days of food and water supplies in the hardest hit provinces. Source, International Federation of Red Cross Logistics Update, November 9, 2025. Relief trucks are staged inland, but blocked ports and flooded roads could delay resupply. In San Miguel Bay and eastern Cagayan, the surge could reach up to two kilometers inland if peak winds and high tide coincide. Residents who remember Typhoon Haiyan's wall of water are not waiting for confirmation. Many have already left, carrying only essentials and hoping the surge will not reach their homes this time. Sirens blare across coastal towns. Some are labeled as tsunami warning, others as general emergency alerts. Social media fills with posts claiming a tsunami is coming as families rush from the shore. What triggers a real tsunami and how do you know which alarm to trust? A true tsunami in the Philippines requires one of two things, a powerful offshore earthquake or a massive underwater landslide. Typhoons, no matter how violent, cannot directly cause a tsunami. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, and Pagasa all agree. Their latest bulletins confirm there is no tsunami warning in effect as of this hour. This status is current as of November 9, 2025, at 1800 Philippine Standard Time. The confusion often starts with siren systems. 
In many coastal barangays, the same towers are programmed for both tsunami and storm surge alerts. During a storm like Feng Wang, local officials may sound the siren to warn of rising water, sometimes using the tsunami mode by mistake, or because the system does not have a separate surge setting. Device logs from towns in Aurora and Camarines no Norte show multiple cases where the wrong siren mode was activated during peak surge threats. In past years, sensors have also misfired after detecting sudden changes in sea level, even when those changes were just surge or wind-driven waves, not seismic activity. 5LCS and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center follow a strict protocol. When a significant offshore earthquake is detected, they analyze the data within minutes. If a tsunami is likely, they issue a formal bulletin, first online, then through radio, television, and local government text alerts. No such bulletin has been issued for Feng Wang. A Fivio LCS spokesperson said storm surge is the immediate danger and a tsunami warning only follows a real offshore earthquake. You will hear a tsunami warning first from official agencies, not from rumors or social media. Right now, the confirmed ocean threat is storm surge. Only act on tsunami warnings if you see official bulletins from the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology, or PAGASA. When in doubt, check their websites, listen to local radio, or ask barangay officials for the latest advisory. In this storm, listening to the right alarm can save lives. Today, nearly 110 million Filipinos face a future where super typhoons may strike closer together, fueled by record warm Pacific waters, according to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, 2025. How we prepare and who we trust will decide not just survival, but recovery. In storms like these, clear warnings save lives. Rumors do not.